Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, how are you today? I'm fine. Alhamdulillah. Okay, here we have an short interview about IDN. Yeah. There are several questions. Please answer carefully. Okay, number one. Please tell me about yourself. My name is Muhammad Yudha Saka. I am a ninth grade student from IDN Boarding School. Uh, I'm 15 years old, currently living in uh, Jakarta and Bandung, mostly in Jakarta. And I uh, have made a total of 30 plus projects in IDN Boarding School. Uh, um, most of my projects that I've made is uh, design pro is design projects uh, like making Figma, UI UX, or uh, random T-shirt designs. And my hobby is to uh, any type of, of sports. I can play play them. Expect, except for badminton, I'm not very good at badminton. Uh, and uh, uh, my favorite sport would be. Uh, Futsal because uh, I think I'm uh, that's where I'm good at. Like out of every sports that I have ever played, I think futsal is one of the best. Uh, one of the uh, I think I'm uh, best at playing futsal than other sports. Maybe that's about me. Okay, next. Um, do you ever become the teacher and where is it? Uh, yeah, I've been a teacher several times. Uh, the first time is when uh, I was at 8th grade, uh, the first semester. I became a teacher at Al Ansor with Raihan and also Moreno. Uh, at Al Ansor, I teach them about how to make uh, an illustration design. So. Uh, yeah, I was uh, I was uh, the teacher there to show them how to create a uh, a illustration design of a person or any type of uh, things that they want to illustrate, such as maybe they want to make laptops or something like that. And um, it was an uh, interesting experience because uh, it was not easy to. Uh, make them actually uh, do the task uh, because some of them are uh, doing something else in their laptops and the second time I teach is at a uh, uh, I forgot the name but it was somewhere in uh, Jakarta in Block M uh, I teach on uh, I teach robotics so I teach on uh, Starting from what is robotic? How does the robotic work? How does the robot? How how does the robots work? And also how how to create the codes and uh, yeah, some of the basics of robotics that we learn in IDN. And the third and fourth time is <coughs> is right here in IDN. So I joined. Uh, I became a uh, teacher at IDN uh, IT camp. That's where the uh, uh, the students who have already been accepted by IDN boarding school uh, could they could experience what it's like to actually be a student here at IDN boarding school. And I teach about uh, once the third time it was uh, Figma, and the uh, last time is. Uh, I was teaching about uh, robotics or the line follower project. <coughs> How much money do you get from that project? Um, since uh, all of them are an, are an event from IDN, so uh, I didn't get any uh, money except for the one in, uh, in Jakarta. I think I got uh, fifty thousand from that uh, from the teaching there. Uh, so I only got fifty thousand out of uh, everything. 
Next, what is your opinion about IDN School? Um, IDN boarding school. Uh, it's a very very it's a good school, a very very good school actually. Not every it's not every day you find a school like IDN boarding school where you only focus on three uh, main subjects uh, such as um, IT, Dimia, and also English, especially in IT and English, because that's where you are the most at. Uh, trying to uh, IDN is focusing you at IT and English without forgetting the manners of uh, Islam. So we learn IT such in seventh grade. We learn about uh, Scratch, uh, Scratch and Scratch and Google Docs and website. So uh, the first, the first uh, project is Scratch. We made about eight games. Uh, Using Scratch, uh, the, uh, the one that's one of my favorite projects in seventh grade uh, is the Scratch project, and then uh, website. We made three websites, which is our personal website that we still use until today, uh, the, and then making a website for our previous uh, elementary school, and also making a website for uh, a mosque near our house, and um, the third one is Build Box. So. And also, Buildbox uh, made uh, three, oh, five, five games using Buildbox, and then, uh, and then eighth grade Figma and 3D design using Spline. It's uh, uh, one of my favorite subjects since I like to make designs more than making games, and and uh, and then also the 3D 3D designs like making. Uh, a isometric room, making a a car, making an, an Eiffel Tower. It's a very very uh, interesting thing to do, especially for uh, junior high school students. It's not every day that you get that in IDN. And the ninth grade, we make uh, Android applications. Uh, the uh, we have already made six in total, and. Uh, five projects are from Codular and one is using Kotlin Android Studio, uh, but uh, it's not finished yet. It's still an on-progress project and uh, still on the making on finishing. Um, and yeah, overall it's a very, very great uh, uh, school and different. Okay. What is the most interesting experience during learning in IDN school? Uh, my most interesting experience during learning at IDN World School, uh, it was um, making a making a uh, design, uh, making a design which is um, the. Uh, image manipulation design because uh, I was sick for a week so the, the week during the uh, making of the project I was sick so I didn't know how to make it so and I have to do it by my I have to uh, do the project by my own without the help of my teacher my uh, the, the teacher actually helped a little bit but mostly it's from YouTube so uh, it was an interesting experience for me any work for IDN school? Uh, for IDN boarding school, um, just keep up the good work uh, uh, and add some more events, some more interesting events such as uh, uh, IDN fest or something like that. But overall, it's a, it's already uh, IDN is already doing a good job. So yeah, that's all. Thank you so much for your attention. And then I suppose they say hum, uh, Alhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Hello everyone. So, uh, so today I'll be presenting my favorite projects of when I while learning at Indian so far. So. Uh, I'll be showing two projects from 7th grade, two from 8th, and one from 9th uh, grade. So, 
Uh, before, okay, but before we start, uh, I'm going to tell a little bit about myself. So my name is Mama Dilesaka. I'm a ninth grade student of Aiden Boarding School from Jakarta and have made a total of 30 plus projects since the seventh grade. Uh, so my total projects are 13 games. Uh, eight of them consist of Scratch and five of them consist of uh, build, box, build box games. Uh, nine designs, which I, which mostly were Figma designs, and and one Photopia design, ten IoT projects, and five Android uh, projects using Codular. So, out of all of this, uh, I have picked some of my favorite projects, uh, starting from the games. Uh, so. So I starting from Scratch. So Scratch, for those who, who don't know, is a programming language developed by MIT, and I've made eight games in total using this uh, programming language or application. So the app, the uh, game that I picked to become one of that's my one of my favorite projects is the Bomberman game. So Bomberman is a game where the player must try to defeat all the enemies, or in this context, the crabs, by killing uh, them using bombs. And uh, why this is my favorite project is because when, when I was doing this project, uh, uh, I can't connect to the internet at all. So I was supposed to do, I was supposed to continue making my website, but because I can't connect, so I don't have, I have nothing to do, and I've decided to open my uh, Scratch module and start making this game. And at first, I didn't really understand how the game works, uh, how the code actually works, and what is the main point of this game. But then I asked my teacher back then, oh, in seventh grade, it was Mr. Risky, uh, I asked him how the game works and everything else, and he ex explained it to me pretty well about the game. Uh, I asked a little bit about how the code works and uh, everything else uh, about the game, and he he explained it pretty well. And uh, the other interesting thing about this project is I made the sound effects by my own voice because I don't have access to the internet. Okay, uh, so the next project would be from Buildbox. So Buildbox is the world's first software that truly allows anyone to create amazing games regardless of their technical skills. So uh, making games in Buildbox become a fluid process that doesn't require any scripting, programming, or software design experience. So it's basically a uh, a uh, moderate version of Scratch. And in Buildbox, we are told to make uh, five games consist of four 3D games and one 2D games, which the 2D game was uh, the game. But my favorite project out of all projects were, was the Switching Ball game. Uh, why is it? So Switching Ball is a game where you must avoid obstacle courses and get as many gems as possible and cross the finish line to win the game. Uh, why Switching Ball was my favorite project is because I put a lot of effort uh, into making it because uh, Buildbox at the time when I was making the game it has many many uh, bugs that I can fix so I recreate this game for a few times now. Uh, I think I have made five different versions of the games and only one of them worked, which is this one that you can see. Uh, and it's one of the, it's an interesting experience to have while making, uh, while making the game. And next, I'm going to, <coughs> next is the eighth grade project here. Uh, the first project is Photopia. So, Photopia is a web-based photo and graphics editor. It is used for image editing, creating illustrations, script designs, and many more. And I've only made one project using this platform, Photopia. Uh, and the project that I've made is the image manipulation project. In this project, I was told to combine a few pictures and manipulate them to look like one single picture. 
So everything that you see here is actually four different pictures, starting from the sea, the mountains, the, the mountain background, the moon, and the uh, ground is actually four different. Uh, I see four different uh, images that I manipulate and try to make them look into one single picture. So uh, this project was one of my favorite because it isn't. Uh, it's a challenging project to make because finding the assets that looks good uh, to manipulate and finding looks good to manipulate and uh, and creating it in Photopia is actually quite challenging for me because I was sick for a few days so I didn't uh, I didn't really learn from. The teacher. So after the teacher explained to me a, bit, a little bit about how to make this, how to make it look like a single picture, I started to uh, I start to try and watch YouTube videos on how to make an image manipulation. But and I watched a YouTube uh, about how to do image manipulation in Photoshop instead of Photopia because uh, Photopia and Photoshop are basically the same thing but Photopia is a web version of Photoshop and a free web version of Photoshop. And the next project is Slime. So Slime is a free 3D design software with real-time collaboration to create web interactive experience in the browser. So uh, basically the 3D version of Figma. Yeah. Uh, so my my favorite project in Splime would be my favorite project in Splime would be the three D room design. So in this project, I was told to make a room design by my design teacher at eighth grade. So I've decided to make a some kind of gaming room. Why it's my favorite? Because I put so much effort in the details, even though no one will look at the even though no one would look at the details, but I really, really put effort in this project. So if you could see the uh, PC here, uh, there, it looks like there's been something inside because I did actually put so much stuff inside of that little box that no one would actually see. And also I made the keyboard by myself, I made the TV by myself, the monitor, the two monitors and the desk, the desk and the chair by myself. The hardest part in this project I think would uh, it will be uh, the desk. Uh, no, uh, the chair because it has many many curves so it's hard to make those curves look so I try to make the curves look as natural as possible but uh, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with the results and uh, also the PC, the PC is kind of, uh, I did too much stuff to the PC and next is the Codular, is Codular. So Codular is a platform to make application that is based using the uh, Scratch programming language. So Codular and Scratch, uh, so Codular use the Scratch programming language. So Codular uses block codes to create their applications. And my favorite application would be the radio app. So the radio app, in my opinion, is like the halal version of Spotify. So in this project, I was told to make an application that could stream uh, radios, radios, uh, radios of uh, Quran and Muratals uh, or something like that. Why this is my favorite project? Because once again, I put a little bit too much effort in this project to make it look like uh, the actual Spotify application. Uh, okay, uh, thank you so much. Maybe that is all for my favorite project's presentation. Uh, I bid you farewell. Once again, thank you so much uh, for watching. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Hello everyone. So uh, in this uh, time, I will present. I will present uh, about one of the countries in Europe. Uh, as you guys can see behind me, there is the Germany flag. 
So today I'm going to explain a little bit about German, their food, and some of the, their most famous and uh, <laughs> impactful people from the German. Uh, so let's start from what from Germany. So Germany, officially the Federal Republic of Germany, a country in the Western region of Central Europe, and of Central Europe. Uh, Germany is the second most populated country uh, in Europe after Russia. So Russia is the first at the very top of the leaderboard, <coughs> the most populated country, while uh, German, even though German isn't as big as Russia, but it's the second most populated country in Europe. <coughs> and uh, Germany is also the most populous member state of the European Union. Germany is situated between the Baltics and the North Seas to the north and the Alps and the uh, Alps mountains to the, to the south. <coughs> so, let's talk about the capital city of uh, Germany. So, German has a capital city that's owned <coughs> by Berlin, a very, very famous city in Europe. Berlin, uh, not only very famous, uh, but it's also the largest city in Germany by both area and also population. There are more than 3.85 uh, million people or inhabitants uh, in Berlin, which made Berlin the uh, European Union's most popular city. <coughs> Berlin is surrounded by the state of Brandenburg and contiguous with Potsdam, Brandenburg's ca capital. Uh, Alright, so next we are going to talk about the traditional foods or the, some of the uh, popular foods that came from uh, Germany. So, German has many traditional foods and drinks, of course, like many other cultures do. Uh, um, and most of the foods that they have in Germany are mostly bread, potatoes, and also meat, such as lamb, uh, chicken, and some sort. So let's start from Kaiserslautern. Uh, Kaiserslautern is a dish from the southeastern uh, regions of Germany. Kaiserslautern is made from layering small spatzel pasta uh, with grated cheese, and uh, and uh, the Germans uh, usually top top it using uh, fried onion, and it's usually served with a salad or sometimes with applesauce. Yes, uh, this dish is actually uh, a German dish. Some of you might think uh, that pasta is only in Italy, but no, uh, the Germans also have some. Uh, pasta. Next is the currywurst. So the currywurst is uh, so is a is sold from stalls and fast food eateries in many towns and cities. And if you want to know what the food of the capital city Berlin is famous for, you'll quickly discover that it's uh, currywurst. So currywurst is a is a sausage that. Uh, <coughs> that's mixed with some uh, some herbs and spices and also a some kind of special sauce uh, and it's usually not eaten at, at home it's more of a fast food that you eat on the go next is the schnitzel so so the schnitzel is made by tenderizing a piece of meat and then covering it in egg flour and breadcrumbs before frying it in oil uh, very similar to a french escalope uh, this the schnitzel is actually uh, originated from Austria. So uh, I forgot the picture. It's actually some kind of meat, any kind of meat, lamb, pork chop, uh, or uh, something like that. Uh, okay, and next is the famous people from Germany. So, of course, every country has their very own, uh, have a famous people from their countries, such in Indonesia maybe we have Sukarno and Sukarno Muhatta and many other uh, heroes from our country. Uh, German also have some, some very uh, famous people. Uh, okay. So let's start from the first one is Ludwig van Beethoven. Ludwig van Beethoven is considered as one of the greatest musical geniuses that ever lived. His famous Symphony 5 is a beloved classic. So Ludwig van Beethoven is a uh, musical artist 
from the 19th or 18th century and is very popular uh, at the time. And the next is this guy, the Austrian painter. I'm not going to say his name, you guys know, know who he is. Uh, so the Austrian painter was the leader of a uh, group in Germany and was responsible for the start of the World War, uh, of the Second World War and the Holocaust, all the uh, slaughter of the Jews. Uh, these two uh, happened, caused the death of at least 40 million people. So this Austrian pa painter is actually known to be a very bad guy. <coughs> Uh, and the next is uh, the very uh, famous Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein was a German-born theoretic uh, physics who is widely held to be one of the greatest and most influential scientists of all time. He is the scientist who, uh, who found the theory of relativity. Uh, a theory that about time uh, of relativity. <laughs> so the next person will be the very famous scientist from German, which is Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein was a German-born theoretical physic uh, who is widely held to be one of the greatest and most influential scientists of all time. He is the one who. Uh, found the theory of relati relativity and also uh, one of the smartest people on earth that has uh, ever lived on earth with an IQ of I believe it was above 180 or something and uh, maybe that's it, that's all from me thank you very much thank you so much in, in German uh, Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Oh, I don't know.